what are we getting? Are we getting this volume? Are we getting the volume? If you look to your left, you're gonna see uh, Santa, the Christmas trees, and uh, reindeers. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So uh, go ahead and uh, you can set your own Christmas decorations. But for now, we're gonna be solving a Calc 3 problem. Folks, welcome to the next episode of Calculus 3 with Rifat Bari. I'm an artificial intelligence researcher at the Morales Lab, and today we're gonna check out triple integration. In the last few lectures, we were checking out double integration and its applications. Today, we're checking out the following problem of triple integration. Evaluate this triple integral over the function x, y, z squared dv over this volume b, where your volume B is defined as follows. B is the set of all points X, Y, Z, such that X is between zero and one, Y is between minus one and two, and Z is between zero and three. Okay, so first of all, we have to understand what we're being asked here. So whenever you're trying to understand the problem, you have to visualize what's being asked of you. We have two main things. Whenever you have integration, you have two things. What are the two things we're dealing with? We're dealing with a function. Here's your function, x, y, z squared. And here, you're doing triple integration. So you no longer have a 3D function. You have now a four-dimensional function. f of x, y, z is equal to x, y, z squared. So even if you put this in your calculator, and you try to visualize how this looks like, you can't. Why? Because this is 4D. It has three variables, that means the output is one more. So you, you're trying to visualize a 4D function, and even in a 3D calculator, you cannot do that. The best you can do is get a contour plot. Um, so this is the first thing we're dealing with, our function. What's the second thing we're dealing with? The second thing is the region, okay? Or in this case, the volume. The volume here is the set of all points where x is between, you know, uh, let's say x is between a and b, y is between c and d, and z is between e and f, right? So this is the simplest case you can have for triple integrals. You have a volume and you have a function, and you're trying to integrate the function over the volume. In double integrals, you are trying to integrate a two-dimensional function over a two-dimensional area, right? A, a three-dimensional function over a two-dimensional area. In 3D integrals, you have one more dimension for each, right? You have a 4D function and you have a 3D volume that you're integrating over. So now we wanna take a look at how our volume looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to draw the x, y, and z axes. And so what is our region of integration looking like? Well, first of all, our x is bounded between 0 and 1. So that's going to be, let's take blue. x is between 0 and 1. y is between minus 1 and 2. So let's say this is minus 1. Let's say this is 2. And z is between 0 and 3. So z is between 0 and 3. So what are you getting here? Well, if you look carefully, what are you getting here? You're getting a rectangular prism. If I connect all of these dots, I'm gonna end up with something that looks like this. And this is not to scale, but this is the region that we're integrating over. This is the volume that we're integrating over. Okay, so remember in double integrals, you were integrating over a region on the xy plane. Now you're integrating over an actual rectangular prism, an actual object. So when we do triple integrals, what are we getting? Are we getting this volume? Are we getting the volume of this cube? No, we're not getting, the, we're not getting any volume unless our integrand here is one, which in this case it's not. So we're not get, getting volume. We're getting some kind of an abstract quantity. This can be flux, this can be some kind of other four dimensional quantity, but we're not getting volume. That's not what a triple integral gives us unless this here was replaced with one, okay? So try to avoid thinking of triple integrals as volume. So now that we understand what we're dealing with here, I wanna give you an idea of how triple integrals are actually defined on this blackboard. So we know that a double integral, if I have a double integral of f of x, y, dA, how is this double integral gonna be defined? This double integral is defined as a Riemann sum, 
but that's what a single integral is defined as. So we're not just gonna use one Riemann sum. No, we're gonna use two because we have two integrals, right? So we're gonna take the limit of these Riemann sums as the number of partitions of our region approaches infinity. So you can say, I don't know, i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero, to m and n of f of x star y star dA. Okay, so what is this visually saying? This is saying that if you have a region, if I have some kind of a region like this, I'm gonna have m partitions, I'm gonna have m partitions going horizontally, and I'm gonna have n partitions going vertically. Right, so I'm gonna have n partitions this way and m partitions that way. And if I let the number of partitions horizontally and vertically go to infinity, then I'm gonna get an infinitely good approximation. And my approximation is gonna become exact as the number of partitions approaches infinity. Now what do you do with triple integrals? This is double integrals. What if I have a triple integral like this? Well now, I no longer have a 3D function, no, I have a 4D function. And I'm integra integrating not over an area, but over a volume. And so now, am I gonna have two Riemann sums? No, I'm gonna have three. So that's gonna look something like this. The limit as not m and n approach infinity, but m, n, and uh, I don't know, o approach infinity, right? Because now we have three kinds of partitions. And so we're gonna have three not one, not two, but three Riemann sums. If I, okay, and here I can say i starts at zero, j starts at zero, k starts at zero, and each one of these partitions go to infinity, so our approximation becomes infinitely precise. And so now if you wanna get a kind of picture in your mind of what we're dealing with, we have a kind of rectangular prism. We have a kind of rectangular prism, and we're slicing it up. We're slicing it up in the horizontal direction, right, this is m. We're slicing it up in the vertical direction. This is n. And then we're slicing it up in one more dimension because this is 3D, so we have three dimensions. So we're slicing it up this way as well, uh, the width, okay, so this is O. And as the number of partitions in all three directions approaches infinity, your approximation becomes exact. Now we're gonna finally start the integration. We're gonna integrate x, y, z squared over the volume, over this volume b, where b is, uh, let's see, x is between 0 to 1, okay, so x is between 0 to 1, y is between minus 1 and 2, and z is between 0 and 3. So these are going to be our limits of integration for each variable. So let's go ahead and do this. So x, y, z squared. Now dv, what can this be expanded as? It can be dz, dy, uh, let's use, this dv can become dz, dy, dx. It can become dx, dy, dz. There's six possible permutations of how you can integrate. And they're all gonna give you the same answer. All you have to remember is you cannot just switch around the limits of integration unless you're integrating over a rectangularly simple region because of Fubini's theorem. So let's go ahead and integrate this with respect to dz, dy, dx. You can choose whatever order you want. The limits of integration for z is between zero and three, for y is between minus one and two, and for x is between zero and one. So if I do z, I'm gonna have one third x, y, z cubed from z is equal to zero to three, and I'm gonna have three, two more integrals on the outside, don't forget about them. They're gonna be dy and dx. So I'm gonna have what, one third x, y, if I plug in three over here, I'll get 27, and I'll have two more integrals, dy, dx on the outside, and one third goes into 27 how many times? That's gonna be nine. So I'm left with nine x, y, dy, dx from minus one to two, from zero to one, if I integrate with respect to y, that means I'm holding x constant. Remember, that means taking a cross-sectional area. So I'm gonna have nine over two xy squared from y is minus one to two dx from x is zero to one. So what am I gonna have here? Let's take it all the way here. I'm going to be left with, let's take the constant outside and I have the integral from zero to one of x times 
instead of y, I'm gonna put two, right? So I'm gonna have two squared minus negative one squared dx. So I'll be left with nine over two, the integral from zero to one of x, four minus, this is one, so four minus one is three, right? So I'll have x times three dx, pull the constant out outside, so I have 27 over two uh, times the integral of x from zero to one dx, and so what am I left with? I'm just left with a very simple integration from uh, zero to one of x squared over two, multiply this by 27 over two, and so what am I left when I substitute in one for x? I'm left with my final answer of 27 over four. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this episode of Calculus 3. If you wanna keep supporting Barry Science Lab, head over to our sponsor's website, brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab, for 20% off the premium offer. We'll check you out the next episode. Ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equals learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.